for those who say, you know, I really have a problem fearing the Lord, you may want to read Deuteronomy 28. You will not have a problem fearing him after that. When you find out that this <coughs> is what is in store for you yeah. if you disobey mm -hmm. the word of God. So we looked at that overview uh, of the book of Deuteronomy and some specific things, you know, referencing it. Uh, so this week, from that point of 28, we would have realized that uh, there's now going to be the encouragement to choose life. It is no trifle, it is your life, and the death of Moses. And we now pick up and go into the reading of Joshua which is now the mace of leadership has been passed from Moses to Joshua. And the Lord will begin to show that Joshua has the credential. He has God's approval, verification, and validation. The last part of what we had spoken about last week was Lois brought up about prayer from Luke. And we were talking about prayer. And I just want to qualify uh, the end portion of what we were discussing. Because everybody knows, well, maybe not everybody. There are some people, I know, I know Stephen knows, <laughs> that I am a person who believes that specific prayer gets specific response. And we were talking about the specificity of prayer. What the, th I, the difference that I approach it from is, is yes, I do believe in specific prayer gets specific response, but I don't specify to God what I want mm -hmm. in that prayer. I simply say to him, I have this sister, I have this brother that is under this current affliction. Please, almighty God, help them bring to them the caregivers that they need you know so i'm a firm believer in that specific prayer but i will never specify what i think god should do that's that's the only thing i wanted to clarify uh, because we just left it out there a little bit okay that's it that was the overview of what we talked about last week where do you want to go <laughs> I did something that I normally don't do to show you that it can work. And an index card. Every time I looked at something, I thought, wow, that's pretty interesting. I just jotted it down. <laughs> yeah. So I have, you can see it, Deuteronomy 31 prophecy. It's from April 9th reading. So I have all of these little, little notes. Because uh, I found those thoughts most interesting, and I know that uh, some have said, you know what, I'm going to start writing down my notes. They don't have to be long pages, it's just an index card with little pieces on that. <laughs> and if you noticed, we about three weeks ago, we took a little bit closer look because the question uh, arose about uh, the leadership staff of Judah because of the genealogy uh, that, that appears in the Gospels. And we went back to Genesis chapter 49, which is future courses of the 12 tribes, if you remember that. And we specifically looked at what the pronouncement of a destiny was for the tribe of Judah. And it specifically spells it out there that way back in 1500 years before Christ, this prophecy was put forward and said it would be from the genealogy or the heritage of Judah that the staff of leadership would not depart. That is fulfilled in Jesus and that's why that genealogy was there. But my little note says that, ah, there is also that type of prophecy that Moses spoke of and again said this is what each tribe is going to be about and I thought of Carol 
<laughs> because in, in that prophecy there, it didn't, it still used Joseph and Levi and did not sp specifically replace Joseph and Levi with Ephraim and Manasseh, which were the children of Joseph. Okay, so now it's time for me to quiet down. What do you want to talk about? Stephen says, get the whiteboard out. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we, we did something, I, I think it was something interesting this week with what we've been reading about and this, the whole story in general. Um, what was it, last Friday night or whenever it was, the, 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 the Prince of Egypt was shown here as a, a film. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we actually uh, watched it on uh, Prime. Prime Video, and uh, it was, you know, it, it was it was interesting. It was it was good. Nice to see the comparison between the Bible and the liberties they take with right. the film. Yeah. You know, but and then, you get the gist. <laughs> that prompted me to say, say, let's see if we can find the old movie on Prime Video, The Ten Commandments. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Charles and Esther. Yeah. <laughs> last night we, we watched uh, the uh, the Ten Commandments and you know the, the the correlation between what we've read, you know the the animated film and then and the Ten Commandments and both of which took a lot of liberties and then you know <laughs> you know the way they they, they you know, presented presented things but uh, it, it it was it was interesting to to, to see how. The main thought. It, 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 you know, it, I can't watch them. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah. Look, at, look, I can't watch them. I get five minutes. Out, Are you kidding me? Where is that written? I just said to Alice, you spend most of it yelling at the TV. Yeah, but unless you've read the Bible, you wouldn't know. Right. Well, you like would think that this is the way it really was. Yeah. So you know, it's nice to have that biblical knowledge and. You know, it's they're, better they're to have the biblical yeah. knowledge <laughs> yes. than it is to have Hollywood's version of what yeah. took yes. place. Um, <laughs> it, was, it was interesting to just to, to make the, the dual comparison as, mm -hmm. as, you, as you went along. It, you know, um, I have to confess, last Friday night I was watching NASCAR Cup. <laughs> I wasn't watching the movie. I was watching. Yeah. No, no. It's, NASCAR's gotten so boring. I get some really good sleep out of it. <laughs> yes. We dozed off and on from the time for the Ten Commandments too. That's long. Yeah. 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 And a lot of baloney. I almost fell asleep during intermission. <laughs> I would have. <laughs> what do you think? A question not quite related to what we're reading, but related to the service. On sure. sure. One of the readings that you, I think it was you, did, it said that the devil went into Judas. Right. And that's why he betrayed Jesus. Right. But now, a lot of times we're talking about that this Jesus living and dying was part of the plan, part of the covenant. So, that how just, does it fit? Yeah. That's the question. How, <laughs> how does that fit? Yeah, you know, it's. <laughs> that's I have a response for you, but I want to see if any of your brothers and sisters have a response for you. Well, I think something similar happened to the Pharaoh, where God make he made the, the Pharaoh's heart hard, mm -hmm. so that he could reject, uh, you know, what Moses was asking, so that eventually God could use that to show His powers, to you know, so that people can believe in God. Same thing happened to Saul and David, where God, you know, put a bad spirit in Saul. Um, I did not understand why. Um, what, what was the plan and so I guess because David had to take his place take Saul's place um, but yeah I mean the Bible is, is well both of them have a, have a similar connection <laughs> that, that we can look Havik 
God knows the hearts. <coughs> That that is that's a that's a good statement. That's a good statement. Well, we need to take it just a little bit further. How does he know their heart? What is he trying to circumvent? God, that is. If Pharaoh would have said, you know what, go ahead. You know, what do you think Pharaoh would have said when he was talking to other people? I left him go. I let him go. Mm -hmm. He would have taken the credit mm -hmm. because his ego would have got too big. The same thing that happens to King Saul. King Saul, his ego got the best of him. He was they, either one were not capable of being humble and accrediting all of this to the strength and power of the Lord. That that's for those two, but there's a different perspective that has a great potential for what you have asked. Okay. <laughs> you got a thought? Well, you, to fulfill the prophecy, who was going to carry it forward? I think God had to allow the devil to enter um you know, to, to carry it forward. I, I mean, nobody was going to do that, right? I don't believe anybody would have done that. Did you? They might have thought they would, but they wouldn't have done it. So the devil has an ego. Um, I'd like to add one more thing. It's more like a question. When Jesus was arrested, before he was arrested, he was telling the disciples to get money and get swords. And then one of them struck the high priest, the high priest servant's the, ear, the ear. Off. was that in, well, Jesus must have saw that he needed somebody to have a sword to do it so he could then heal the, the priest no you have to understand where now as we go through the Old Testament so we were at Saul after Saul comes King David King David is the great golden era of Israel's history as such, it was a focal point for revisionist dreams in the New Testament era. So one of the reasons that we hear Jesus, when he heals someone, he gives them a specific charge. What is the charge? Don't no, tell anybody. Don't, anybody. Yeah. don't tell anybody. Because the people of God, there, there's a whole, uh, it's all in here. It's, <laughs> it's all in here. We're making the progress to this way. But to do it in a very condensed fashion, uh, I will put it this way. So now, in our reading, Israel now, now goes into the Promised Land. So in Joshua chapter 5, who greets them? An angel with a sword. This time they didn't need a donkey. <laughs> Joshua was able to see the angel with the Lord and says, Are you for us or against us? Well, that angel tells Joshua, which is then telling God's people, you have been given this promised land as a gift. If you use it according to the righteousness of God, you're going to stay here. But as soon as you don't, you're going to start hearing this language. As soon as you put this holy ground to unholy use, this is what scripture says. I will vomit you out. I will vomit you. It uses that word. I will vomit you out. So then we have to be able to see that when they go in, things don't go very well. We're going to go into the period of Judges. We're going to go into the United Kingdom. We're going to find out that David's kingdom is given an eternal promise. The genealogy that we look at traces Jesus' stepdad and his mom to the tribe of Judah, fulfilling the prophecy. So one of the things that's also established there is after King David, there are a lot of kings in succession. Mm -hmm. But the Northern Kingdom crumbles in 722 BC, the Southern Kingdom crumbles in 586 BC. And then the people of God are dispersed. When they are dispersed, 
the temple is destroyed. The Babylonians knock it, they just knock it down. Now in 536 BC, the Edict of Restoration takes place under Cyrus the Persian, where Ezra and Nehemiah that you will read about are the ones that are sent back. Ezra leads law reform, Nehemiah leads in the reconstruction of the walls around Jerusalem and the temple. But they're not gonna be a nation. Until when? Something like 1954? Mm -hmm. They were vomited out of the land, but God uses this in a powerful and potent way because once his people are dispersed throughout the world at that time, they have no place of worship. There is no temple. What develops? The synagogue. The synagogue. The church is a reflection of a synagogue. So the people of God were able to gather around the spurn, the writing prophets. This is when scripture began to be scribed and written and the scrolls were distributed throughout the synagogues where the people of God could come together and do it. They couldn't do what we were doing. They were not able to read like we have this great blessing that we can carry this book with us and like we had talked last week, not only can we carry, this book can go at home. When Tom and Madeline go for a walk, they talk about scripture. Scripture is now going with them. Mm -hmm. When the book is still on the counter. That's awesome. So the word of God is now distributed through the synagogue. And everywhere the Jewish people are, the people that they live in their towns with, they know that the Jewish people are expecting a Messiah. Now, the Jewish people are expecting a Messiah like King David, a military man that's going to come in there and kick the behind of anybody who opposes God. This is why Jesus says, don't tell everybody. Because they would have wanted him to posture himself as a military king like King David. So what Christ was telling his disciples, be prepared to arm yourself more with the armor of scripture than the sword. He wasn't calling for military campaign type exercises, but knew that we would be under assault and we would need to protect ourselves. But you look in if you go to the next chapter from devotions, we read Galatians chapter 5. If you go to Galatians chapter 6, what is it called? Put on the full armor of God. Mm -hmm. What is the sword? Well, you know what? Why should we speak it? <laughs> it's right there, too. Look at it. It's open to that page. <laughs> Okay, Lord, we got you. <laughs> Word of God. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, Ephesians, I'm sorry. That, blah. Ephesians 6 is the full armor of God. I was not in the right place. Got too excited. Ephesians 6 is the full armor of God. But listen to what it says, Fernando in this place. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Specifically, what I want you to pay attention to is see what the sword in the full armor of God is specifically associated with. Therefore put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes you may be able to stand your ground and after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. 
In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. It gives us a clarity. The sword is the Word of God. Sometimes we have to understand uh, what and how we are being led. We we are called to be the church militant. That doesn't mean military. Yeah. Stand up for the gospel. To answer your question, <laughs> Satan knew that he was going to be defeated. He was pretty sure of that. So he would use, his ego got the best of him. He actually, think about this in the simplest of ways. Satan and all his demons were throwing a big party on Good Friday. They thought they beat God. They were not so party-minded on Easter morning when they found out they got beat. So when it says Satan entered into him, Satan was still actively trying to dethrone God. That is what ego is all about. When someone tries to up the other person. No, I'm better than you. No, I'm better than you. No, I'm better than you. I know a person who's even better than both of us. <laughs> it doesn't belong. It does not belong in a relationship with God. <coughs> you and I are all at the same place, at the base of the cross, with our heads bowed. Not one of us can stand up and say, Jesus, I think you owe me something. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> Don't do it. There's only one response that each and every one of us will have. By thy grace, O Lord. Only by thy grace. Because we don't deserve any of it. We are not righteous people. We struggle with it all the time. And we can be duped and used by the adversary. Here's a simple way that I put it forth because it's how my mind works, simply. So God created all things good. So then what is evil? The misuse of good. Mm -hmm. But the image that I always see is if you look at evil and you look at it in a the mirror, then what's it spell? <laughs> Love. Live. 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 Yeah. So what's evil? What is what is evil? Living the wrong way. Mm -hmm. That's the fruit of this that's the fruit of the sinful nature. Living the wrong way. <coughs> and sometimes we can be convinced that uh, what we're doing is for the better but really we're being used not in the right way. So we should be sensitive to those things. And he's still trying. The, uh, the one who opposes our God. He's still trying every day. I'm sure that he, I'm sure that he tries and whacks us, each and every one of us, oh, yeah. in a different way. Mm -hmm. you, know? you know why? Because he knows us better than we know ourselves. He knows what we struggle with. And he will constantly try to put that struggle in front of us to get us to bite. And we have to just remember, Lord Jesus, please, no, help me. How is it said? And deliver us from evil. When evil is tired, he comes to see me. That's an easy target. <laughs> we all are. Yeah. He, uh, oh, yeah. We all are. He talks more. <laughs> uh, 
We all are an easy target. Our strength is not in who we are. We fall for it though. But <laughs> and that's right. and that's when I, I, I get mad because the all he always falls for it. Instead of saying, God just help me out here now he just goes on the other side. I'm like, Oh <laughs> <laughs> okay. You see this wonderful Bible that I was so graciously given by the Kratzers? Every name that refer to God is on the on the cover of this Bible. Mm. Every single name. Okay. One of my favorites is El Shaddai. Yeah. El Shaddai, God of the mountain. El, wherever you see El, El, that is God. Shaddai is mountain. I am who I am, Elohim. The whole piece for us is that, yeah, we are going to be tempted. But he has given us the name above all names. We know his name. I've, we've talked, I've talked frequently about this in the last couple of weeks, privately with brothers and sisters. You have this great name that was given to you call on it Jesus no one can answer to it no one can answer to his name except him that's the kind of power he has given you that no matter where you are and what situation and what you are being tempted with you can simply close your eyes and say Jesus I need help Help me, I'm struggling with this. That's why he gave you his name. Is it true that somebody told me, an old person, the more closer, the more closer to God you get, the more trials mm -hmm. you get through life? Because that's the adversaries telling us, don't go there, I want you to come here. <laughs> this is absolutely true. Do you ever hear of a guy named Martin Luther? <laughs> <laughs> Martin, and I've, I've spoken this to you on a couple of occasions, but it's so powerful that we need to be able to carry this with us. Martin Luther refers to it as a fourfold antithesis. And here is the fourfold antithesis that Martin Luther puts forward to us. As it was revealed to him by the Holy Spirit, so shall it be revealed to us by the same Holy Spirit. That's powerful in itself. Those who are justified by faith are at peace with God, but at tribulation with the world. Those who are unrighteous, worldly people, again, I can see why the Lord had directed that twofold piece of devotion. That which is not the fruit of the Spirit, but the fruit of the sinful nature, and that which was of the fruitful nature. So, those who are unrighteous are at peace with the world, but at tribulation with God. So then, God, Holy Spirit, is eternal. So, in that relationship, those who are justified through faith, their peace will be eternal, their tribulation will be temporary. Mm -hmm. Those who are unrighteous, their peace will be temporary, <coughs> their tribulation will be okay. eternal. Yeah. That is a powerful fourfold point. antithesis to carry with you at all times. To know that you can be at peace with God mm -hmm. and you can be suffering all kinds of assaults by the adversary. You have to be comforted by 
what the Spirit revealed to Martin. My peace with God is going to be eternal. And the suffering that I am under at this time is temporary. It will come to an end. But think about those who are unrighteous. They're at peace. Well, I'm living high. This is the, oh my goodness, my barns are full. Everything is gone. Yeah. Their peace yeah. is going to come to an end. Mm -hmm. And guess where they're going to be from Jesus' description of heaven from Luke 16. We're fastly approaching that reading. You're going to approach it this week. Jesus, whom I consider to be an absolute authority on heaven and prayer, <laughs> I know of no one <laughs> that has more authority on heaven and prayer than Jesus. He gives that description of the rich man and Lazarus. Not Lazarus, the brother of Martha and Mary, but Lazarus, the poor, crippled beggar, who the rich man passed every single day. And Lazarus cried out, and the rich man just walked right by. Well, Jesus paints for us this heavenly picture where now Lazarus is healed. He's no longer, no longer a beggar, no longer crippled, and he's standing by Father Abraham. And the rich man is all the way on the other side of the chasm in unquenchable fire and he cries out across the chasm Father Abraham, Father Abraham because he's of Jewish descent could you please send Lazarus over so that he may quench my thirst now this is modern day vernacular Abraham says no 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 can't do that Lazarus can't come over there. This chasm, we are separated. You are in your eternal tribulation. That's not the way it is spoken in the scripture at that point, but that's what it points to. And Lazarus is at his eternal peace. The antithesis that Martin was shown by the Spirit. And what does the rich man cry out? Well, can you send them back to my brothers and warn them? Nope. <laughs> they got Moses and the prophets. If they won't listen to them, Jesus finishes the thought and says, if they won't listen to Moses and the prophets, they will not listen to someone even if he is raised from the dead. Yes, ma'am. I have a question that I have to ask you because <laughs> this is a cousin of ours that she keeps telling me, even though she knows I'm not Catholic, but I'm, I have to be respectable. She keeps saying that when she has bad things happen to her, she prays the 21 day rosary for, to Saint Gabriel. I keep saying to her, you're doing the wrong thing because you should not be praying to a saint, you should be praying to, to an angel, to, an angel to, uh, to Jesus because he said, she says, when she does it, everything is revealed to her. I don't think so. <laughs> and I keep saying to her, that's not Jesus who's revealing things to you. Is the you know, it's the other who's trying to, you know, fake it. Well, she doesn't take it very well, but I I'm sure she doesn't take it very well. <laughs> <laughs> but she keeps saying to me, that, why don't you try, Carlos? I don't believe in saints. No, praying to saints. To saints. I believe they exist to help people on earth by, G by God, probably, but I'm not praying to him, no. I'm not praying to no saints. Well, no. The, the, see what Alice has to I agree with you 100% because when I worked in a nursing home, one of my activities were to go down and lead the, um, the rosary group, and I would tell my activity director, <laughs> I'm not Catholic. And she <laughs> says, well, you're going to do it. <laughs> so, Thank God for some, God sent me the grace to do this because I memorized the whole thing. And we've been going on and going on and they recite all these um, 
the Hail Marys. Hail Marys. Hail Marys. And I thought, what? How many Hail Marys do they have to tell? I never, seriously, I never understood this. And then they get into all the mysteries and things. It's like, mm -hmm. And not only that, they say, pray when it's a full moon. That's something that the, the archangel, you have more powerful and set hours of the day. And I said, that's not by God's law. No. Or the Bible right. says. I, I got to reel you back here. I got <laughs> <laughs> to reel you back. Because right? I said, that's not what the Bible says. And I said, it's one part. When you are raising children, right. is it easy or difficult? It's difficult, yeah. We don't give you the instructions. <laughs> <laughs> so is it is it better is it better to take your time? Because there's no way that you're going to get Matthew and Manuel no. to understand it all. So it's it's over a period of time <laughs> that you continually gently put forth some instruction and encouragement because the, as soon as you say because I just witnessed this <laughs> I know you did. as soon as you start saying no they become defiant yeah, they mm -hmm. do. and they, they, they take a different path and a different trajectory so we have to understand that again uh there's a there's a conscience that takes place and you have to nurture that conscience do i believe in praying to mary or to gabriel or to the archangel michael or to any other heavenly angel no i don't do that but when i see a brother or sister bowing their head in prayer I do not want to damage that no. I would rather slowly like teaching our own offspring gently nurture and encourage them that you, you may you may want to you may want to read this piece in scripture and, and, but as soon as you say as soon as you get a little bit aggressive Guess what closes? Oh, no, I don't. Their get ears. Yeah, Their no, ears I, I don't, close. I'm gonna, no, I'm gonna, I told her that it's one uh, that I'm coming here, of course, the Bible study, and it's one part of the Bible it says something about that. And I'm going to give it to her for her to read. And I said, do you use the Bible? Well, yeah, we use the Bible. I know, because I was in Catholic for mm -hmm. a long time, myself too. But they don't use much of the... The reading there, so I'm going to I'm already it. Catholic, took me a long time. <laughs> <laughs> My whole family is still a Catholic, but I'm, I'm the only one who's outside because I, I've seen things that I don't agree with them, and so I, I'm an outsider. <laughs> so I don't well, care. but we also have to understand language, because, you know, one thing uh, that I want to share with you, Alice, is you are Catholic. I am? Yes, yeah, ma'am. Not the whole woman Catholic. Mossy. Yeah. We are small C Catholic. Yeah. Uh, okay. We are not capital C Catholic. <laughs> yeah. Capital C Catholic depicts uh, a, <laughs> a specific <laughs> denomination. But we say this in our creed. We believe in one holy yeah. Catholic. Yeah. What that means is universal. Yeah. Right. One holy Catholic. And just as gently, again, it's the same way you gently try to nurture and get your kids on the right path. The same thing has to be done in loving your brothers and sisters in the faith. When we see things like that, the first thing we should do is say, Almighty and merciful God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. See, we're identifying who we're speaking. We don't have to say that out loud to them, but we ask for help. Guidance. We don't say, no, you're wrong, I'm right. That's not no, no, I, the approach. No, I just say I don't do it. That's all. <laughs> do you remember that time I asked you what religion is the right religion? There is none. Yeah. <laughs> we, each, we each got a little bit right. Yeah. So if, if you read the third chapter of, of the book of Revelation, Jesus talking to the seven churches, mm -hmm. I, I like this. 
I have this against you. Yeah. <laughs> so is there is there a perfect denomination? The answer is, don't be so foolish. <laughs> don't be so foolish. There are certain things that I believe that we do that pleases God. So it's more important for us to recognize the activity of the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. rather than what makes a difference between us. But know that the same Holy Spirit that filled the room and Peter began to speak in tongues that everybody could hear him. That same Holy Spirit was placed upon Paul. That same Holy Spirit fell upon John and James, mm -hmm. Philip, Bartholomew, Thomas, Thaddeus, Simon of Zealot. The same Holy Spirit that fell upon within, welled up in the presence of Martin Luther. That same Holy Spirit, God doesn't give us a little bit of this and a little, or show favoritism to someone. The same Holy Spirit that was poured out upon the people of God that came before us is the same Holy Spirit that is poured out upon you and I. Can you see the difference? The Holy Spirit seems to be a little bit more clearer to you now. Mm. Why? Because you're reading the Word. Mm. The Holy Spirit, this is what it says in John 14, 26, the counsel of the Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name. He will teach you all things and bring into remembrance all that I have said. Mm -hmm. So the more you make yourself available to this word, the more the Holy Spirit has the opportunity to say, let me show you something. Let me reveal this to you. So when we see the Holy Spirit active, in someone's life, you can't pray. You, know, yeah. you, you can act it a little bit, but if you are earnestly praying and you believe in power and or prayer answered, that's signs of the presence of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Don't injure their conscience. Ask God how you can help them grow, how they can help you grow. Yeah. We need to step back and say, he's in charge. Use us in the way you will to use us. Which on, in, the, in the Bible says, if you practice other gods, God will not forgive you for that or you don't. There's only one unforgivable sin. It's recorded in Matthew, or Mark chapter three. It's called sin against the Holy Spirit. So these mm -hmm. these people that they pray rosaries so many times a day, like fifty rosaries a day, and then they go and go see one of those people that they put the cards on the table, and then they say, "Oh, please help me this because my uh, husband is going the wrong way now." Well, right, that's right. a little different. And, though. I'm Catholic, and um, and then I they come back and they pray again fifty rosaries to, <coughs> "Oh Lord, I commit this this thing." Again. <laughs> well, now my take on the whole thing is like I don't agree with a lot of the stuff because a lot of the stuff that you know, but it's ritualistic, you know what I mean? And um, a lot of it is, is man-made, basically. You know, like the fasting and that sort of thing. But for my thing, like my sisters didn't continue to go to church. But I did, and um, with knowing that I don't agree with a lot of it, I followed it for my children's sake so that they have a religion that they can understand. I did. Say they that. can't under. I mean, if they have no religion, they can't pick or choose a religion of their own. But you know, I just respectfully, you know, agree to disagree. They were just not happy when they were there, and now they are happy here. That's the only thing I see. One big qualifier, mm -hmm. because I actually was uh, questioned one Sunday after worship by a sister in the faith here at Holy Cross, she says, I can't believe you said you're not a Christian. And I looked at her, I said, when did I say that? Yeah. Where did I say that? She said, well, you, you said it in your sermon. I said, no ma'am, you heard me wrong. I said, I am not religious. Uh -huh. I am a man in relationship with Christ. 
I am not a religious man. I am one who takes my relationship with Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit extremely serious. But religion? Nah. No. Not for me. Not for me. Because that is that is a practice. It's an exercise. A relationship is up close and personal. So Let's let's go. <laughs> Let, are we going back to the one year Bible? <laughs> <laughs> let's go back to. Yes, yeah, back to the reading. Help, help me out here. And I probably could have gone back and read this and understood it a little bit better. So the two spies are sent forth and they're provided protection. Right. What was their initial task? And because they had protection, how did they get the word back for what they were doing? They went in to spy out the city of Jericho because Jericho was going to be the first city when they crossed over into the promised land. It will be the first city that is uh, military campaigned against once they go into the promised land. Now, they already carried out military campaign on the east side of the Jordan River in the conquest of Sion and Og. And you have uh, the settlements of Reuben, Gad, and the half-tribe of Manasseh. That will be their allotment. So now they go over. The spies are sent back in to the promised land, specifically, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> specifically to Jericho to basically take a, an assessment of how are they structured militarily? Where is their strength? How are we to approach this? Uh, Rahab the prostitute, think about that. You're, you're a foreigner going to a new city, and if you want to make yourself inconspicuous, where are you going to go? To the whore. To the brothel. <laughs> <laughs> you know, nobody's thinking anything. Of, well, there's a lot of strange men that go in here. <laughs> So when we read scripture, we have to be able to see these things and say, dang, you know, what a wonderful perspective. And now we can also see uh, when you're struggling with sin and you're, you, you're doubting, can he forgive me? And Rahab's told, you will, you will not be treated like the rest. Make sure everybody you care for and love is in your, they will, the, will be the only ones who survive. So we can see how they got in there, basically unnoticed, if you will, how they were protected by someone we would say, okay, but we can see how that comes together. And then we see the forgiveness that is extended because basically of being in line with God's mission, God's purpose. She lets them down with a scarlet cord. That is her commission that she is given. Make sure that cord appears in your window because that's the only window we want to see that cord in and that is the only dwelling inside that city that will be safe and will not come under the pursuit. But then they didn't even realize that they didn't have to really spy out to see how they were going to be militarily opposed because psychological warfare was carried out. Mm -hmm. March around the city, blow the trumpets, leave. Mm -hmm. March around the city, blow the trumpets, mm -hmm. leave. Don't talk. Do that for six don't days. Mm -hmm. Don't talk, don't yell. Yeah, don't do nothing, just <laughs> blow the trump, walk around, <laughs> leave. <laughs> On the seventh day, walk around seven times. Now the, you're going to have someone's attention. They're, they're, that's not the same thing they did for the last six days. <laughs> We're in trouble here. We are in trouble. And they use basically, I've never seen it personally, but I know that there, was, there are people who have a voice that when they hit a certain note, they can shatter glass. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is the psychological warfare that's carried out on Jericho. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it said the wall actually fell down. Mm -hmm. 
Well, so it's more than that. You have to, it's a lot of people. Now you're talking. Now you're talking to a Mason. <laughs> <laughs> and I've seen a lot of masonry walls fall down because <laughs> they were not built right, <laughs> and it would only take vibration. <laughs> Shouting was vibrating enough that made the wall come down. Yeah, yeah. In science, they call it resonance. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Just like that bridge, I think it was in California, right, where they built the suspended bridge, and then the wind will cause it to twist, mm -hmm. and yeah. then it just broke apart. And that's because of the vibration. It, it vibrated like a reed, and it vibrated so much that it just collapsed. I a thought brand it was new the hand of God. <laughs> well, it's his hands doing that. We are not getting to the whiteboard. <laughs> Here's an interesting thing about what Fernando just said. Little known, but absolutely true. All of these suspension bridges, they are there's thousands and thousands of strands of cable. And then they are wound tight by another one. That's our neighbor that has the patent on that machine. Wow. That, that patent on that machine is owned by Squibb Machine in Forks Township. We were just invited like three weeks ago, Nathan and I were invited. They just finished making the, that winder specifically for the Williamsburg Bridge in Virginia. And we were invited in to see the demo on, on this thing. Unbelievable. Mm -hmm. But hillbillies. I mean, they live right next to us. They're hillbillies. <laughs> Incredible. Incredible. <laughs> well, I, I put all these things on this index card. <laughs> but... What did I, I don't know where the Spirit's going to take us. Well, he took us where he wanted us to go. <laughs> well, we have a question over here. Yes, ma'am. It says, then they burned, uh, burned the whole city and everything in it. But then they put the silver and gold in the art, articles of bronze and iron in a treasury of the Lord's house. But Joshua spared Rahab, the prostitute, with her family and all who belonged with her, because she hid the man the man Joshua had sent as spies to Jericho, and she lives in the Israelites to this day. Where are all those people? Which people? The people from Jericho or the people? Well, you're going to find that out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, okay. You're going to find that out. Rahab is a prostitute. Did you ever hear of a guy named Boaz? Yeah. 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 That was her son. No? Boaz marries Ruth. You ever hear of Ruth? Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, Boaz and Ruth have a child. You know what their child's name is? Jesse. You know who Jesse's, one of Jesse's sons is? David. David. Mm -hmm. You're going to be, begin to see all of these things develop and take place of, of how God uses people brings them in, all, everything is brought into this narrative. But when you, when you read it, if you're not sitting at table with brothers and sisters and, and in that fellowship, you you're not gonna get this. Right. You're, you're not gonna see how God has just taken this and woven all of these things together because by the time you get there, You've already misplaced it, so you, 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 you don't remember, you know. And even though you're reading the word Rahab, 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 what well, rings a bell, I messed with school with her. <laughs> uh, thank you. God bless you. Closing prayers. Sister Lois. All praise, all glory, all majesty is yours this night. Father, we thank you for clarity, for insight into our studies. Lord, on Monday, your word said salt is good. Lord, we're to be salt and light. 
And so I would just ask that our words would be seasoned mm. with your love, your mercy, your grace. Father, that we would speak forth that which you anoint us to do, that your Holy Spirit gives us and guides us. And Lord, when we are tempted, for we know the enemy constantly likes to pull us here or there, and Lord, in those temptations, you have um, not given us temptation beyond an escape. And that escape is the name of your son, Jesus. So Lord, when the enemy comes against us, help us to remember that you have given us power, you have given us authority in the name of Jesus. So, Lord, we are grateful tonight, and I just ask that you would bless everyone at this table this night, that you would be with them throughout the rest of the week. This Holy Week, Lord, draw our thoughts to you and what you have done for us. Lord, just guide us, draw us to you, and we thank you and we praise you for all meaning all that you have done for us. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. amen.